Okay, so I've got Catherine here. Catherine's just finished this 12-week course. So Catherine, tell us a little bit about yourself, like your line of work and um, any children that you've got. Okay, so I work from home. My husband and I uh, run a plumbing and heating engineer business, which is very busy at this time of year. So the phone and emails and everything is constantly going. Um, I do have two children, two girls. One is eight and the other one is 10. And we live in sunny southwest in, ah, in Britain. Yeah. Brilliant. And so what brought you to wanting to do the 12 week course? What kind of symptoms was you dealing with? How was you feeling? So the main reason I joined up for the course was my exhaustion. Um, I was constantly, literally tired all the time um, to the point where I didn't feel like it was a wise decision to sit down during the daytime because I, I would just nod off. Um, and even in the mornings, when I used to get up in the mornings, I'd, I'd feel really awful, like, like somebody had beaten me up. And it was always a real struggle. I've never been a, an early riser. So it was, it, was, it was the exhaustion and the fatigue mm. that was stopping me from doing things. How long had you had that? Years. Definitely worse since having the children, but I yeah. definitely, I remember similar feelings throughout my 20s and 30s. So it's definitely mm. been with me a really, really long time. And had you tried anything to overcome it over the years? Several, yeah. Um, lots and lots of visits to the GP um, who generally just offered antidepressants. Um, I've tried some different therapies, counseling. Um, I did get um, transferred to the chronic fatigue syndrome clinic a couple of years ago, but they just said, you're a mum, you've got a job and two kids, you're going to be tired. So <laughs> that didn't help. Um, yeah, you know it was more than that, though. Could you feel that it was more than just? <laughs> yeah, I knew I, was, I knew I would be tired. I had other friends in similar situations to me and they were tired, but it was tired wasn't the right word to use. I wasn't tired. I was, I was exhausted. Everything was a real effort for me and it made me feel quite low, which yeah. is why they, you know, would say have some antidepressants because you're obviously depressed. I'm like, but, I'm, but I think that's a result of my exhaustion. Mm hmm. And did the antidepressants help? Um, initially, yeah, to lift me out of how I was feeling. Um, I'm on a really, really low dosage now still. And I, and I don't think that, because I don't believe that it's the depression that's the problem. Yeah. I don't think I, uh, I'll be on them forever. Mm. Um, actually, they help, but it's not a long-term solution. Yeah. And then when you're that tired, there's normally other health challenges that go alongside it. So what kind of other health challenges did you have? So I've suffered with anxiety um, pretty much all of my life. Um, it used to be really bad. When I was in my early 20s, it got so bad that I, I wouldn't go out. I wouldn't do things. I wouldn't like get on a bus. I wouldn't eat in a restaurant. I, a, a lot of my final year of university, I, I worked from home. I couldn't go to the lectures. Um, I'd get panic attacks and anxiety attacks. Um, it's not so bad now, but it's definitely still there. It's definitely something that flares up every now and then. Yeah. So was that important for you to work on as well? Or would you just kind of come to accept that as part of you? I don't know that I'd even really, yeah, I kind of accepted it. I got to a point in my life where I could deal with it and it didn't run my life. I just lived with it alongside yeah. it and it was okay. And I don't think I ever really, when I looked at joining this course, it was it was for the exhaustion. I hadn't really thought that maybe I, I could look into the anxiety as well and that it would be linked. Yeah. I didn't really yeah. see that. So picking up on what you just said then, do you think it is linked now? Without a doubt, absolutely. I've seen so many, just from the last few weeks, um, changes like in my mental health and my physical health and my gut health. Like, it's so obvious to me now. <laughs> how interlinked they are and how by changing one thing, it might change another. Yeah, I'd not seen it before. I kind of always half knew, I'd always heard mm -hmm. that gut health and mind health were linked, but actually I, I didn't really understand it, but I do a little bit now. Yeah, that's amazing. And then I've just glanced over my notes because I've got our notes here for my first chat and you were telling me things then like um, shallow breathing and racing heart, mm -hmm. um, panic attacks. Um, so you had quite a lot going on, on oh, bloating as well. That was a big one for you. Yeah wasn't it so that yeah. was the kind of the main things going on you tried some stuff it hadn't worked so what made you want to try nutrition to look into something natural 
Um, I mean, a, a lot of it was because I I kind of run out of other options. I've tried. Yeah. I've asked my GP numerous times. There's got to be something wrong. And I think along with a lot of the other people I've recently met, you know, you go for your blood tests and you get your blood tests back, and they say, "Yeah, you're normal." And you think, "Well, no, I, there's something wrong. I know there's something wrong. What could it be?" Um, and yeah, just from sort of things I'd heard, things I'd read. Of course, it makes sense that what we're putting in our bodies yeah. would make a difference, but I didn't understand what and how and how to go about looking into that. So, yeah. And then how did you feel about like trusting yourself or trusting me or trusting the course that it would help or that you would be able to keep up with things? Like, did you have any reservations at all? No, I don't think so. I mean, like I said, I've tried so many other things um, that, you know, this in a, in a way it almost almost felt like this could be my last chance to fix my not fix myself but if this could be the last chance and if if this doesn't work if I don't do it wholeheartedly and 100 percent and commit myself to it yeah what what's my alternative just to carry on for the rest of my life feeling the way I was feeling and that I'd got to a point where that just was not an option yeah and you have embraced so many things you've had like a real can-do attitude you've tried mm. you've asked questions you've tried everything so um it's now becoming really really clear yeah because you feel like you was kind of at the end of the road of trying things that you had to throw yourself into it fully absolutely yeah I did I've literally tried so much stuff and then some of it's gone really well some of it's gone in the bins yeah. <laughs> but you know I've tried it all and I've you know I'm eating things now and I'm doing things now which would never have occurred to me before yeah uh, so yeah, it's great to have a new set of stuff in my life. So tell us some of the changes that you've seen. I want you to tell us first of all about the trousers because we were having a chat before we recorded. <laughs> and that was just so funny. So when we first chatted, you said I've got two wardrobes. I've got it's basically like the, the slim wardrobe and then like the bloated wardrobe. So <laughs> tell us a little bit about that and, and what you're wearing today. <laughs> it was. I was almost at a point where I was going to chuck out my slim wardrobe and just resign myself to a lifetime of. of of comfy trouser bottoms yeah um, but actually no um my bloating is so much better than it was before I still have my issues but in general I I've, I've lost a little bit of weight along the way which has definitely helped with my jeans um but I'm actually wearing an old pair of trousers which I used to wear for work today that I've not been able to do up for the last couple of years yeah. and I've been wearing them comfortably today and yeah it feels really good to know yeah. that I, I can keep hold of them <laughs> I love that. That's so good. Okay, so that was the bloating. And then, so the panic attack, she was mentioning that you kind of went for a tough time at sort of, you always say winter time, didn't you, with mm. um, anxiety and panic attacks. And it was quite bad last year. Yeah. Um, and then you had them, was you saying about every other week before you started the course, would you say? So, yeah, I was getting them more regularly. I'd had them a bit in the summer. I think this year, obviously, everybody's anxiety has been a little bit heightened anyway. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'd had a few um, just before I started the course. I'd had some fairly big ones. One, in fact, that had woken me in the night. Um, and I had to, my poor husband had to get up and bring me flannels and cool me down. And, yeah. But, yeah, it got to, I've not suffered so much for a few years. But, yeah, in the last 12 months, I've had more than more than usual. There's been so much going on in the world, hasn't there? That it's um it's hit people really hard. Definitely. And what's happened since you've been doing the twelve week course with those? Uh, well, I haven't had a panic attack since I've started it, which is great. Um, I'm very aware of my breathing now and how to breathe properly and be aware of of, of how I'm doing it. Um, I don't generally get any like flashes of panic or anything, so my heart's been absolutely fine. Um, yeah. yeah, I just generally generally feel a bit bit calmer and more in control of my body I think mm -hmm. yeah and understanding a lot more of the the link how everything's linked in the body yeah Absolutely. so you said your biggest thing was the absolute like sheer exhaustion mm -hmm. so tell us how that's kind of progressed um really well actually I still I still get the tiredness sometimes it's not as extreme as it was um yeah. my mornings have been transformed completely um I used to really struggle to get up for the school run um and now I'm up first in the house. I'll get up, I'll get the kids up. I can make them breakfast. I can sometimes even make my own breakfast beforehand. I've just got that bit more time and a bit more energy to, to get things done. Um, and I'm sleeping a lot better at night as well, which again helps with the mornings. Um, so yeah, I still have my moments where um, I'm just too tired to do anything, but nothing like before. It's mm. yeah, changed my life in the mornings for sure. 
Amazing. You were saying just before we recorded that you feel like this is like just the beginning and you just you're just so excited to continue now. Is that right? Definitely. Yeah. Just the, the little changes that I've seen just in 12 weeks has, has just sort of geared me up to say, like, learn more, learn more, do more. Because if you feel this good after 12 weeks, imagine another 12 weeks and then another one, how good you're going to feel and how much better you're going to feel as you go along. It's Yeah, definitely. I um, feel like I've started something amazing so what would you say say another woman's watching this now and she is having you know panic attacks or anxiety feeling exhausted what do you think are like some of the first steps that people can take to start because it's like you said you'd heard some of this before you kind of knew it mm. but did you say that you didn't really believe it because you because you'd not felt it in yourself with that sort of gut and mind connection yeah I always kind of heard of it because it's, it's yeah. mental, isn't it the, the link between gut and brain health but I guess I didn't really understand that and but yeah. yeah I think until you physically feel a change or notice something in yourself and when I did there was a very certain sorry let me turn that off that's okay we could barely hear that <laughs> there was um there was a very particular time I remember and I think it was you know, on about week uh four or five when some 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 of the things that I was implementing and some of the things I was eating um I really enjoyed the food but I felt my mood change quite a lot mm -hmm. and whereas before before having this knowledge I would never have linked the two I would yeah. never have linked my feelings of l like low mood and depression I would never have linked it to what I'd had for tea or what I'd eaten that day. Whereas I saw a real clear link between it. And I think for anyone who's not sure, yeah, I would say, you know, just be really open-minded. There's things that that are amazing that you can learn about yourself that if you don't know about them, it can be really frustrating. I was really frustrated before because I didn't, it was like a big mix up of stuff in my head I thought I knew stuff but I couldn't link them together and I didn't have the knowledge to back it up yeah whereas now I can see if you know if something's changing I've got some tools that I can use to help myself feel better and I, I, I can see how things are affecting me mm, yeah that's so powerful so could you say is there like one one or two tips that you could give to people who are watching this who where you know the health's not great what, what's some like things that you found fairly easy to change that had an impact would you say definitely the hydration I think that's the biggest one says that. yeah I know and everybody knows don't know that you should yeah. have a certain amount of water per day and and I did find it at the beginning I thought there's no way I can drink yeah two liters of water but yesterday I drank three and I'm still thirsty so yeah. it's just one of those things when you get into a habit of something yeah. you know and I'm in I'm in my early 40s now so I've been doing things for four decades yeah and they just become your normal yeah so you can create a new normal mm. it takes a little bit of work but now my new normal is that I drink at least two liters of water a day so now the thought of only having you know a couple of glasses seems odd to me yes that's so quick, isn't it? That, yeah. that mindset shift. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, I think, yeah, the first couple of weeks, I think the hydrating and getting the right foods into you makes such a big difference. Yeah. And it's nice actually, because I used to, I used to love some of the foods I eat now, things like salmon and avocado. I've always liked that food, but I didn't buy it and I didn't use it in the house because nobody else in my family likes it. Whereas now I'm like, this is my section of the fridge. Mm -hmm. Help yourself if you want it, but I'm having this food now because it's good yeah. for me. I mm -hmm. think that's something that's changed. Yeah, sometimes we have to separate ourselves like that because the family might be unwilling to make the change and we need to for some reason. Their body's telling yeah. us we need to change. And often, I think you've seen it with your family a little bit, but once you start to change, it starts to trickle down through the family anyway, but you have to be brave mm -hmm. enough almost to sometimes make that separation if they're not quite on the same page yeah. as you in the beginning. Definitely, yeah, definitely. My husband's been great, and he's actually said to me, "Oh, I actually quite like this." Which, you know, for him to admit that because he is one of those people that says it's all a load of nonsense. But mm -hmm. now seeing firsthand, actually, what a few little changes can do for you. So, yeah. And he's given you quite a lot of feedback about changes that he's seen in you as well, hasn't he? What's he yeah. been noticing? I think because. I'm the sort of person that sometimes I won't notice little changes um, and I'll be improving and improving, but I won't notice until something goes wrong. Yeah. Uh, whereas yeah. He, he sees it from, from the outside and he mm -hmm. does, he says to me really, you know, several times a week, you're so much different. 
than you were at the beginning. You've changed so much. This is better. That's better. So yeah, he sees it and he, he keeps telling me, which again, spurs me on to keep going. Yeah. And just before we wrap up, I feel like a lot of the feedback I get from the Exhausted to Energise method is that the, the calls and the accountability really help people. So how was that experience for you? Absolutely. It's, um, it's really heartwarming when you meet some other people and you say something to them and they say, oh, yeah, I've got that. Oh, I understand that. Because sometimes when you've got these these problems and these issues, you feel so alone. Yes, you do. Um, and especially, you know, with my husband, he's great. I love him. He's fab. But sometimes I would say something and he'll say, oh, you know, it's all in your head. Or, yeah. You're a bit crazy. And that's fine. I don't, I don't mind a bit of a joke about it. But sometimes, actually, if you know you've got a support group of people who are feeling the same, thinking the same and going through the same. Yeah, it's it's invaluable. Absolutely. I've loved having this little this little group of people in my phone that are just there. Oh, oh that's so lovely. It always gives me kind of the chills and I always feel a bit emotional when I hear people saying that because it makes such a big difference but thank you so much for sharing your experience um it's been amazing to watch your growth and I'm uh, excited to continue working together yeah. as well and and seeing how you progress definitely it's been fab I'm loving it oh thanks so much speak thank to you, you soon bye, bye.